Hey, how you doing? Black Eyes Chronicles Massive. This is Crazy D, your smooth host as usual. And as you see, as we pan the store, you see, way from the last time when I was uh, joking around and all that with the uh, farewell to retail, uh, as you can see, that I have torn the store down to the final compound. And so you spin around and you see that. Yeah. So I've torn torn it down to the final compound. And this is it, yo. This is one day before we close December 31st. But you know, I had as long as I needed to uh, finish up. So this is the day before we totally finished cleaning out the location at 20,003 because we're going into film all the way. I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, I've been busy. So, Stanley, you looking for some music for the limo? Yes, I am. As a matter of fact, you got some of that good stylistics around too. I sure do. I always keep them around too. Let me put it in the bag for you. Hey, you know that chick named Jill? Used to walk by here all the time. That's how I saw her. Yeah, I know of her. Why? Well, she's the one that got away, but she didn't get away from me. I was coming in to get some music from me, but you weren't open yet. So I had to pull her out to the side of the building and there were no parking spaces there. Sure enough, as I was getting out of my car, I saw this girl climbing the fence in a tie-dye sundress. And that girl was Jill. Yeah, it was Jill. Anyway, she had to throw her bags over the fence before she climbed it. And much to my surprise and delight, before she hopped the fence, she pulled up her dress to climb. She didn't have any panties on. <laughs> Man, that was sweet. I just knew I had to get it for my limo service. So I pulled over the glass stone, and sure enough, she was coming out of the driveway to get to her house. So I stopped and talked to her. Told her she could be a model for me, and she went for it. Well, what did you do with her? Did you get her some work? And I sure did. I get to work every day, mostly night. She's one of my biggest earners. I hear you talking, dog. But you ain't saying nothing. Especially about my cousin, Jill. Jill is big hippie's cousin? My name is Bennett. And I ain't in it. Nigga, you got my cousin involved in the fucking, in that fucking escort business? Dude, you got your nerves to talk? You got bitches on these corners, bending them, breaking you bread. Breaking me bread? Bitch, you don't break shit. They bring it all to that. <laughs> y'all don't have to stop doing what y'all doing, but you do have to take this out of here. Big pimpin'. Big man on Harbor Streets, huh? Hating on another man, making his way? Worried about competition, huh? Okay, my dude. Let me put it to you like this. I can never be jealous or hate on you. Because first, I'm pretty. Second, I don't have to have my ladies on that stuff to get them to make moves. That's the difference between a true pimp and a real simp. You got Jill on that stuff. You got her strung out on that shit. I knew she looked. Crazy D. You jealous of me too? Both you niggas jealous cause I'm coming with the new age pimping. And both of you are the past. <laughs> Look at you crazy, trying to save her. And you big pimp, simping, running around here with your little security team. 
Cause, cause your dirt gonna, like Heinz, catch up to you. You believe this shit you talking, don't you? Direction. While Stanley was talking, Big Pimpin has popped his blade. Crazy D notices it and stops the advance. Crazy D yelling, take all that shit outside. I'm only gonna tell you one more time. I'm about to stick this bitch like a pig. Let the corner come and pick up the remains. Not in my store. Take that shit outside, Terrell. That's right, Stanley. Outside is where we need to go. Look, D, I might have gone too far, but I can't go outside, man. That dude wants to kill me. Well, I close at 8, and it's 8 p.m. now. So you can't stay in here. You got to go. I've had a long day, and you only made it longer. Well, Big Pippin is gonna kill me. My name is Bennett, and I ain't in it. I'm waiting on you, bitch. Don't keep Big Pippin waiting. Get that shit in the back, not in front of the store. Huh. Alleyway of the building, the house is crazy days. The camera pans up to find Stanley hemmed up by Big Pimpin's security team. He is bloody and has an open gash on his forehead. Direction, Big Pimpin walks up to find Stanley unusually quiet for a person who doesn't know if he's going to live or die. Huh. No last words. No ass don't get no begging out of me. Shit, who is you? But another nigga like me. And your day will come. And when it does, let's see if you scream. Or don't give a fuck like me. Fuck you. And the horse you rode in on. If it was under different circumstances, me and you could be cool. But you fuck with fam. And now it's <laughs> fuck pleasantries. And get to it. Bitch ass nigga. Bet you can't do it. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> no, bitch. I, I bet you can't do it. And you ain't never killed nobody before. Now it's time to, to be Big Pimpin'. And all I see is Big Simp. And Big Pimpin' pulls his knife and cuts Stanley deep. Big Pimpin' pulls back to admire his work. Stanley continues to talk. Stanley spitting up blood. Come on, bitch. You can't do better than that. Change of heart, feeling the slip. Look, I tell you what, just let me go. I won't tell nobody about this. Big Pimpin turns away from Stanley, contemplating. Big Pimpin's team is still holding Stanley. The blood is spilling from his wound, and Stanley is starting to lose strength in his legs. The ladies have to hold him up. Direction, Big Pimpin turns around to speak when Stanley falls to the ground. Stanley in remorse. I never thought it would be like this. Damn, it's cold. Damn. If it was me, I'd do the same thing. Direction. Stanley looks at Big Pimpin and smiles before he gradually inches down and dies with his eyes open. Big Pimpin, shocked, nervous, notices his team looking at him looking at the bloody knife in his hand, removing his hat, putting his hands up to his head, tears began to show. What the fuck? What the fuck have I done? Shit. What? Shit. Damn. Fuck. Motherfucker. Direction. The security team looks on, but dare not say a word. They just seen Big Pimpin kill a man. If he was all BS before, if they felt talk his talk was game or not now it was all the way real and they realized they could be next big pimpin looking at his security team this happened nothing we can do about it now thought i was scared he's not wasn't scared what to do now direction one of big pimpin's security team ladies slowly walk up to big pimpin and notices uh, and motions to him to give her the blade takes the blade from out of his hand, putting it in a handkerchief. She motions in a special silent code Big Pimpin developed for the other team members to get the car. Scene cuts to outside of Crazy D's music palace. 
uh, exterior in front of Crazy D's store. Direction. Team member gets in and backs the car back into Alex. Both women lift Stanley's body into the trunk of the car. Big Pimpin looks on and regains confidence. Big Pimpin smiling, talking to himself out loud. Yeah, like he said, did what I was supposed to do. Shit, any good cousin would. Show me your life. Yeah, get his body into the fucking trunk. I don't want to ever hear a word about this, ever. Shit, I was in their life. You think I asked her? She better do. No matter how long it takes, she's gonna break my way. Scene phase. Look, girl, I got you ready for the buck I stroll tonight. <laughs> you ain't know? Yeah, <laughs> I know you did. It was destiny. So, you can walk now, if I had to take other measures. So I don't need a bomb, I don't need a gun, I don't need a knife, if I can control your thoughts, then you'll do what I want you to do without me ever touching you. And if we don't think critically, that's exactly what has happened to some of us and will continue to happen. So it sets an agenda. Secondly, it sets what's normal. Um, I've talked to parents who are more concerned about what goes into their ch on their children's feet than what's on their, in their head. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. They're more concerned about getting them the latest tennis shoe that doesn't make them run faster, jump higher, <laughs> or move quicker than what's going on in their head, what goes into their head. So we have to learn, they have to reject some of the norms. As one of the speakers, Brian, he talked about this morning, we have to learn to reject some of that, what's going into popular, popular culture because it's against our best interest. Best story I heard about tennis shoes is a young man told me when he was growing up, I guess the latest Dr. J, I don't know if y'all old enough to know about Dr. J, <laughs> I'm telling on myself. On, Dr. J was before LeBron James and Kobe Bryant and all that. But anyway, his shoe came out, and it was at that time about $25, $30. Now I know that's cheap for a pair of tennis shoes today, but back in the day we had to cut grass and mow lawns, do all kinds of stuff, get that money. But he said, he told his grandmother, he said, I want the new Dr. J Converse tennis shoes to come out. And his grandmother told him, good, that's wonderful. Let's go get in the car. So they get in the car, and they drive by the shoe store, and they stop at the grocery store. And he said, they don't sell Converse's here. She said, no, they got job applications here. So if you want those tennis shoes, go get your job application, get your job and buy them. And that's what I tell my kids. Unless you're in the NBA, then you're not going to get a $100 pair of tennis shoes. Yes, I can afford it, but no. I'm more concerned about what's going in your mind than what's on your feet. No correction. You did this to yourself. How did we get here? take you on a little tour of the store you know I'm gonna be showing you a little bit more first of all let's start up front real quick now you see we're at night now it's about eight o'clock in the evening in Cleveland it's winter time but you know we've been having some pretty good weather as you see this is the front display that people would see as they leave you know I had to keep my Lauren up there she is uh, my Gemini sister, and then Wyclef John, of course, he's my Gemini brother, you know. Right, 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 right. So, I'm going to show you this a little bit later, but as you can see, 
you can see the secret of the sound system of Crazy D's. As you see, I'm into highs, mid highs, mids, mid lows, lows. You know, I do it. So this was the display case. And you know, it's all torn down now. And as you come along here, this I told you about this earlier. You will see that. I don't know when I'm going to put it in there, but how I built the uh, platform that housed the listening stations and models also set up here at one time. And this is also was where the model display was of different photos, different CD covers I had. And of course, this was just the display wall. You'll see the pictures flipping through, but this was the display wall with the world's largest retailer banner that I had. And of course, this is where the crazy D sign was. A lot of people didn't realize how I got in the back because I had the door to the back so well camouflaged. You'll see that. And people say, how did you get back there? So yeah, so this is where the crazy D sign was. You see, you, you'll see that too. So let me take you back further. Places that most people don't get to see. You know what? After seeing that last match, I know I can do this. And I don't even know this girl, but I know I can work. Oh, yeah? You ain't gonna do nothing. Watch and see. Watch and see. Watch and see. Trust. You think because you're bigger than me, it's about to go down. Oh, oh it's it about to go down. Just believe it is. We'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll see. I'm your guest referee, Fierce. And here we have these two competitors. It's getting steamy, guys. And whoever wins this time gets to go against me. And I'm going to whoop them for our TV. I need you to square up arms, lock hands, and in five, four, three, two, one. Uh oh. Wait a minute. Oh, goodness. Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Oh, 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 wait a minute. So, where did you, first of all, we didn't even get your name because it was so much action going on. What's your name? Top Notch. And why did they call you Top Notch? Because I'm that top. Oops, my bad. <laughs> How did you pull that first round out? I mean, it wasn't hard at all. I mean, look who I'm going against. Oh. Okay, wait a minute. It's uh, just because I'm small. Okay, feist. Yeah. Are you going to be able to pull this out and tie it up and go to the third round? I'm going to try. I'm going to try. But, you know, she does got a little strength and height advantage on me, which we're going to see. We're going to see. Oh, wait a minute now. Let's see the guns because the guns tell what's going on. Okay. The gun, the guns look equal. So let's see your gun. Wait a minute. The guns look equal, so height has nothing to do with it. Okay. All right. Now it's time for round two. Scrub arms. Lock hands. And then five. Wait a minute. Make sure they center now because she's kind of leaning a little. Okay, here we go. I was trying to make sure. Five, four, three, two, one. Go. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Wait a minute. Oh, this is a good one. Oh, they hold him for a minute here. Oh! Oh, oh, wait a minute. Um, what do you have to say about I got what? that humiliating defeat? I got what? But it's alright, I'm a joy star. So we good. We got our winner star go over there. Okay, so what do you have to say? Top notch. Top notch. So you ready to take on all comers? Mm hmm Of course, why not? <laughs> Crazy, what did you see? <laughs> you see you bothered, bothered by something. By something. <laughs> you see, you see bothered, bothered by, by something. something.
You seem bothered by something. something. You seem bothered by something. Bothered by nothing. What I saw, I wish I could forget. Shapeshifter, is this the reward you brought me? The confusion of seeing your twisted, naked, contorted form transforming into this creature that will play in my head forevermore. Surely you have doomed me, cursed me to this. My soul bleeds with your pain. Your pain is but fleeting. Mine is forever. So you saw something no man needs see who wants to remain sane. But think, but think, but think, but think, but think, but think, but think. Get out of my head. Did you, your pain, did you think of mine when you brought me this? Did you not know that I would come to see what you were doing? Did you not plan this? I planned something, not like this, but I knew you would look. Now, you are under my spell. I'm no more under your spell than I was before. Because I hate you and... Where you had no feelings for me at all. No emotions for me, but now you do. Or why did you bring me this? I brought you this because you need some of the melt in your body. Bitch, are you crazy? Who are you to determine what I should have? You're not God. You're more akin to the devil. Could be. But until you ask me to, I cannot free you of this. Jesus, hear my prayer. Everything that you cast on me is returned to you. No weapon put forth shall prosper against me. <laughs> what is this you say to me? You don't know, devil? Look in the mirror. Third thing is technology and communication. I know some of y'all don't tweet. <laughs> but the question is, are we effectively communicating? Mm. Because some of us ain't talking at all. Mm. And I'm not asking you, do you text or do you have a cell phone or do you have a, a tablet or are you on Twitter? I'm saying, are you communicating with the people that you need to communicate with so that when the flash mob pops off, everybody knows what they need to know from the people that's on their team? You can't say that you're a part of this movement, but you ain't talking to somebody on some foolishness. All right. None of the disagreements that we have within this community are important enough to sacrifice it. Mm. And so whether it's your mama, whether it's your auntie and them, whether it's the baby daddy or mama, whether it's your pastor, whether it's friends, whether it's people you work with, understand that most of the beefs that we have in our community are not serious enough to block us from what comes from us working together. That's right. All right. Stop! That's right. Understand the value of forgiveness. Yeah. Yeah. Of being able to say, you know what, I don't have to be right. I just want this to be over. Right. You don't have to agree with me. We just need to move on. Yeah. You don't have to say that I was right, and I don't have to say it was your fault. We just have to understand that together we're better than us alone, and collectively we create a fist as opposed to an open hand that can only slap ourselves in the face but can't knock out the problems that we're dealing with. Are you prepared to communicate on the level that puts us in the place we need to be? Lastly, the deal. Are you willing to commit? Because we need to straight up be like Harriet Tubman. Yes. Right, I need a gun and a torch. <laughs> and once you leave out, you better roll. You get knocked out. I'm serious. Because we don't have the luxury 
for people playing soldier at a time where every life is in the balance. And then, and then for some of you, this may seem like rhetoric, but when I'm looking around the country at young people engaging in activity that is destroying their future before it starts because they believe that's the only option, we are in a difficult place. And we're in a more difficult place when more adults than less blame them for it. Every young person has to take the responsibility for every action they take. But we have to understand that the circumstance that we put them in to be conditioned to believe that that's the option that they chose is a problem. Are you willing to commit? And what is your deal? Is it a one-year deal? Is it a six-month deal? Is it a two-year deal? Is it a one-event deal? Because you've got to be honest with the people that's doing this flash mob how many times they can rely on you to show up. Finally, we know the time and the place. We know the role that we play. We committed. Now we got to hit them and run. We gotta hit them and run. We gotta hit that 7-Eleven and grab every bag of chips that we can. <laughs> Y'all okay. seen the AT&T commercial with the one dude dancing by himself in a flash mob because he missed the text message to say we know the A whole lot of y'all out there dancing by yourself. <laughs> But if it's this many people in here willing to dance today, how many people do you all know are willing to join this dance? You gotta hit them and run. Because this state can't afford another 2010. This state can't afford another 2008. And what I mean by that is we've gotta show up not because President Obama is on the ticket. Right, we got to right, show up because right. we're supposed to show up. Right, right, right. We got to show up because we have an obligation to show up. I'm as dedicated to most of you about re-electing the president, but he's not the reason I vote. Right. I vote because there is a little girl named Madison Johnson who's 12 years old who relies on me to go to the polls to make sure she has what she needs. I go to the polls because there's a nine-year-old little boy named Miles who's counting on me as his daddy to show him what a real man looks like. And a real man takes the civic responsibility to engage in the electoral process as much as, it is, as he does to read to them at night. I go to the polls because I understand that there's an eight-year-old little boy named Malcolm. And I understand that he has to have me fighting for him before he look into Obama to fight for him. If his daddy won't fight for him, why is he looking for the president to? If we don't fight for our children, why should they look to the White House, the city council, to the Congress? We've got to fight for the people in our communities. Hit them and run. And don't run away from the scene of the crime. Run toward the enemies that they understand that will continue to come and continue to come and continue to come, flash mobbing them until we get to a place of victory. Because flash don't stand for nothing more than fighting for liberation and solidifying hope. Okay, let's start right here because many people would not get to see this right here. Okay. A lot of people would not get a chance to see behind the counter unless you were one of my models or actors and you got to see what was behind the counter, but we're going to give you a tour. So come on in so that you see it's all torn down now, but you can see this is the back case. This is what I would see as you came in. And this is the back shelf, and of course you saw that, but you didn't see it in this intimate framework and of course this is where the TVs were and the DVD player and all, all the different business items that I had. The main display case and right over here is where the register used to be. And you can see you can see what what down the counter looked like. You see it's just all torn out now but you get a chance to see what it was like. So here it is, all this wide open space. You know, because I drew this counter when it was built. I drew how I wanted the counter to look. 
from a aerial view down so you will see how it was a reverse L. All right. oh. Oh. Why is that? What sets you apart? Because I'm pretty in the face, slim in the waist, and I'm built. And besides, you're the only one I'll trust with my new form. This summer, Crazy D, the mind that brought you Google Me, and Crazy D's remixes Move Like Hotcakes, brings you the Females DVD, featuring the talents and starring Susie the Crackhead. Constance Phillips, Bernice Champagne, Conwell Jacobs, Courtney Douglas. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes. My girl, my girl, Jesus same girl, same girl. Hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm sorry to cut in on anything. You know, I'm sorry to cut in on y'all. Say, hey, I'm Prodigy. What? Females. Hey, Prodigy. Hey. What's up, girl? Listen, you would never guess who I have on the graph and bath. Are you serious? Do you actually think I'll be caught dead with you? Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Come on out and get on the set. Checking out some of the shots. Females. Females. Show me something else before I... I don't think you realize who the fuck you talking to. Look crazy. I want to work with you. So when can we shoot? Females. Here I am, doing my one-two, my regular, finding ways to promote the store and my digital kiosk. This time, I'm doing a four camera shoot, but it always seems when I'm in the middle of my most creative moments, I'm always getting interrupted. Can't stand that shit. Female. What sets you apart? Because I'm pretty in the face, slim in the waist, and I'm built. And besides, you're the only one I'll trust with my new form. Hmm. Modeling, this is another important thing that you have to understand. And this is really important for African American kids. In Jawanza Kajusu's book called uh, To Be Popular <laughs> Smart. He says black children watch more TV than any other group. So again, if you don't do anything else, turn the TV off. They watch more TV than any other group. Now, the hard part about that is what group has the most negative stereotypes on TV than any other group? Blacks. So basically, our children are watching more negative stereotypes of themselves than any other group, and we wonder why they act crazy. Mm -hmm. That's predictable. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you see negative images of yourself, then you play out those negative images of yourself. <coughs> and, 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 those, and those billionaires that control those images, they know this. They know this. That's why they market to your children the way that they do. And instead of you being more concerned about what's going into your child's head, you fall for that trap and you give them what you think they need instead of it's what they want instead of what they need. Okay, so we know that the media is very powerful, it controls us even when we don't know that it is controlling. 